Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're about to get started here. Uh, the group you have in front of you is the sixth grade band. They meet on an every other day basis. Um, we start band in, uh, for some of you are, that are new to the district, uh, we start band in fifth grade. So for many of the students, uh, this is their second year. But we also allow students to join us, sixth graders. So we've got some newcomers to the band program this year. Um, <clears throat> we alternate every other day with Phi Ed, which is a little unique. Um, in the elementary program, they either met Mondays and Wednesdays or Tuesdays and Thursdays, and then Dr. Knight had, I think it was every Friday or every other Friday or something. And now it's every other day, so it's a little more challenging to kind of remember. And then we also have uh, lessons are kind of on a rotating schedule, so it's a little more difficult to remember too. But they've done a great job, a, a fantastic class coming up this year. One of the things we work on is kind of bringing them all together, getting them used to playing with each other. Um, Mrs. Gold does what she can. Uh, but when they're in three different buildings, it's, that's a tough uh, skill to work on is, is playing together. And now they really get a chance to, to work together all the time. And uh, I've seen a ton of great growth. Um, and that has everything to do with uh, the great start they get from uh, Mrs. Goal and our elementary program. So tonight we're going to start off with the sixth grade, and they're going to play our first piece, The Soaring Spirit. Uh, for our second piece is entitled uh, Serengeti, and it has um, three different uh, parts of the, uh, to the piece, each describing part of the day uh, on the Serengeti. We've got a celebration and the sunrise and the sunset, so you'll hear each distinct part, and there's a lot of neat uh, uh, percussion instruments 
and uh, a lot of unique playing in the fact that the students are asked to not play either the melody or the background, but there could be two or three parts. And then this piece also uses a lot of echo, where we'll hear one part of the band play something, and then shortly right after it, another part. They do a fantastic job. Here is the Serengeti. as we get ready for our third piece, uh, entitled The Saber Dance. And it's a pretty well-known piece. Um, when I was working on my master's degree, one of the things that they kind of drill into you is to try and come up with themes for every concert. And so I, I like to program uh, something from the uh, older generation of music, the classical period, the Baroque period, the Romantic period, something where we kind of can kind of look back in history and see what's been going on. And uh, I was able to find a piece for each level, and so that's kind of what we came up with tonight, this is the classics. So this piece, the saber dance, is kind of considered a classical piece of music. It's very recognizable, um, and the kids really love playing it. It's a really neat piece. So after the sixth grade portion, uh, the seventh graders and sixth graders will swap, and we'll move on. So thank you for uh, being such a great audience so far, and we're going to end the sixth grade portion with the saber dance.
<laughs> All right, we have the seventh grade group in front of you now. And we're going to start off with a, a piece called The French Suite. And we have uh, three uh, very recognizable French folk tunes. And uh, I don't know that they need much of a, uh, an introduction, because if you've gone through any kind of music program, I'm sure you sang them in kindergarten as uh, a round or for some type of grandparents' day. So I'm sure you recognize them all. Our first piece with the seventh grade band is The French Suite. only teach band, but expose them to many different types of music. And that means playing something slow once in a while, despite what they want. So today we're going to play uh, a title piece from Hans Christian Andersen. And they wrote a, they kind of made a musical out of it a long time ago, and a very famous singer, Danny Kaye, uh, was a star in it. And so today we're going to play uh, The Inchworm. I'm sure you'll recognize it.
All right, we're ready for the last piece of the seventh graders. This is their classical piece, uh, the Jupiter Symphony Number no. 40 by Mozart. <clears throat> Definitely one of his most famous. Um, goes without saying, you're going to recognize the melody right away. Um, this is a unique piece. Again, they're being asked to play many different parts instead of just the high parts versus the low parts. There's many different uh, elements going on. They're asked to be very independent, and it makes for a much more complex piece and the more mature sounding that they are, uh, it is, too. So here is Mozart Symphonies number 40, and then again, we'll be swapping groups afterwards. Here is Mozart. to the eighth grade portion. Um, you're probably looking at the fact that when uh, each of the other two groups have come up, they've had three titles. Tonight we're going to play a very unique piece. Um, it's been on my, our, my music library now uh, since I've been here, and it's been a piece they've ordered a long time ago. And every year I, I pull it out thinking I'd like to do it. And then I think about the members I have in my band, and I think about the difficulty level, and I think about the time that we have to prepare it, and then I usually put it back. And this year, I have some key people coming through that make this piece possible. So this is the chance. So you're experiencing a piece that doesn't get performed very often because you need the right people in the right spots. And um, it's really a high school level piece, uh, but it's in our library and I thought we'd give it a try. And they've worked very hard. They work very hard and they do a fantastic job. It's a unique piece. There's no movements. It's a story. It's about Peter and a wolf. And it's going to be narrated by Mr. Burr. And so if you wouldn't mind holding your applause until the absolute uh, last finale of the movement, you'll, you'll definitely notice it, and it'll be easy to make out. Um, that would be great. And um, I hope you enjoy Peter and the Wolf. As Mr. Tenold said, uh, Peter and the Wolf is a children's story in a musical composition. It was written by Sergei Prokofiev in 1936. 
and each character in the story is represented by a musical theme. Um, and we'll introduce each of those themes right now. So first, we have Peter, represented by the band. Next, we have a bird, represented by the flute. And a duck, represented by the oboe. represented by the clarinets. Peter's grandfather represented by the low brass and low woodwinds. Hunters, represented by the woodwinds and timpani. And finally, the wolf, represented by the horns. Once upon a time, there was a boy called Peter. He and his grandfather lived in a cottage surrounded by a high stone wall. Outside, there was a large meadow, and beyond that was a deep, dark forest. Early one morning, Peter opened the gate and walked out into the big green meadow. On a branch of a big tree sat a little bird, Peter's friend. All is quiet, the bird chirped. Just then, a duck came waddling round. She was glad that Peter had not closed the gate and decided to take a nice swim in the pond in the meadow. Seeing the duck, the little bird flew down upon the grass, settled next to her, and shrugged his shoulders. What kind of bird are you if you can't fly, said he. To this the duck replied, 
what kind of bird are you if you can't swim? And dived into the pond. They argued and argued, the duck swimming in the pond and the little bird hopping along the shore. Suddenly, something caught Peter's attention. He noticed a cat crawling through the grass. The cat thought, that little bird is busy arguing. I'll just grab it. Stealthily, the cat crept toward him on her velvet paws. <laughs> Look out, shouted Peter, and the bird darted up into the tree while the duck quacked angrily at the cat from the middle of the pond. Just then, Grandfather came out. He was upset because Peter had gone, gone into the meadow. It's a dangerous place. If a wolf should come out, the, out of the forest, then what would you do? no attention to his grandfather's words. Boys like him are not afraid of wolves. But grandfather took Peter, Peter by the hand, led him home, and locked the gate. No sooner had Peter gone than a big gray wolf came out of the forest. Twinkling, the cat climbed up into the tree. The duck quacked, and in her excitement, jumped out of the pond. But no matter how hard the duck tried to run, she couldn't escape the wolf. He was getting nearer, nearer, catching up with her. Then he got her, and with one gulp, oop, swallowed her. This is how things stood. The cat was sitting on one branch, the bird on another, not too close to the cat.
while the wolf walked around and around the tree, looking at them with greedy eyes. In the meantime, Peter, without the slightest fear, stood behind the closed gate, watching all that was going on. ran home, got a strong rope, and climbed up the high stone wall. One of the branches of the tree around which the wolf was walking stretched over the wall. Grabbing hold of the branch, Peter lightly climbed over onto the tree. Peter said to the bird, fly down, circle over the wolf's head, only take care that he doesn't catch you. The bird almost touched the wolf's head with his wings, while the wolf snapped angrily at him from this side and that. How the bird worried the wolf, how he wanted to catch him. But the bird was clever, and the wolf simply couldn't do anything about it. Meanwhile, Peter made a lasso, and carefully letting it down, caught the wolf by the tail and pulled with all his might. Feeling himself caught, the wolf began to jump wildly, trying to get loose. But Peter tied the other end of the rope to the tree, and the wolf's jumping only made the rope around his tail tighter. Just then, hunters came out of the woods, following the wolf's trail and shooting as they went. sitting in the tree said, don't shoot, Bertie and I have already caught the wolf. Now help us take him to the zoo. And now imagine the triumphant procession, Peter at the head, after him the hunters leading the wolf, and winding up the procession, grandfather and the cat. Above them flew Bertie chirping merrily, my, what brave fellows we are, Peter and I. Look what we have caught. would listen very carefully, you could hear the duck quacking inside the wolf, because the wolf, in his hurry, had swallowed her alive. 